Hi there, welcome to a quadratic expressions and algebraic fractions video on simplifying algebraic fractions by multiplying and dividing. We're going to look at a whole bunch of key examples here, but in all cases we're going to look to factorise first and then cancel where possible. We cancel by finding a number or a letter or sometimes both that goes into the top and the bottom and dividing those in carefully. Alright, let's have a look at an example. Simplify 5x plus 15 over 5. You can see that 5 could go into the top, both of those top numbers. 5 can go into 5x, so we'll take 5 out as a common factor. We'll factorise the top here. 5 lots of x makes 5x, and we ask what have we got to multiply 5 by to get 15, which is a plus 3. So that's factorised the top, and we've got that over 5. And to cancel, we can see that there's a 5 in the bottom and into the top. So we'll divide in the 5 into the bottom once and into the top once. Now we put those little 1 markings there for a reason. I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. But in this case, we're left with x plus 3. Technically, we're x, we've got x plus 3 over 1. When we've got a 1 on the bottom of a fraction, we don't necessarily need to write that in. But if we've got a 1 on the top of a fraction, we do desperately need to write that one in. Otherwise, we'll get the question wrong. So that ends up being x plus 3 in the end. Here we can factorise the top. 3 can go into the top. 3 lots of x makes 3x. We ask ourselves 3 lots of what makes minus 18, in this case minus 6. Now we had an x minus 6 on the bottom, so we can actually divide the bottom by x minus 6 and it goes once and into the top once. So the brackets can cancel out there, but put all those ones in just in case and we get 3, which could technically be 3 over 1, but we don't need to write that 1 in, so just 3 is our answer there. Okay, here, now x squared minus 16 can be factorised in a special way. Have a look at a previous video, if you haven't already, on the difference of two squares. So we're going to take a fancy approach there. We're going to rewrite that as one term squared minus another term squared, which allows us to factorise in a shortcut way. I'll show you in a moment. We'll factorise the bottom while we're here. 5 can go into 5x, x times. And what have we got to multiply 5 by to get minus 20? That's minus 4. Now let's factorise that top bit. Once we can express something as first term squared minus the second term squared, we can have a bracket with each of those terms in it with a plus in between, and we can have a bracket, a version of that with a minus in between. So that comes about from that uh, difference of two squares rule. So once we do that, we've got our factorising of the bottom to put in there. Now you'll notice that we've got common brackets. We can divide the bottom by x minus 4. It goes once, and into the top x minus 4 goes once and sort of cancels out that bracket, but we're putting the ones in to be safe. And we're left with x plus 4 on the top and 5 on the bottom, and we're done. So quite a bit of uh, work there. That's in, saw that special uh, technique of the difference of two squares coming through in that factorising there. Okay, here we've got a quadratic trinomial on the bottom here. So there's a previous video on factorising those. But uh, So if we factorise, we're allowed to factorise the bottom here. We've got x plus 3 there that we'll put in. Now we use the PSF method, or I do anyway. Uh, we want two numbers to go into a set of brackets that multiply together, and the two numbers uh, multiply together to give 15 and add together to give 8. So the, uh, we can list the factors of 15, but I'll, I'll shortcut it here because this is the topic of a previous video. Um, and 3 and 5 go nicely. So x squared plus 8x plus 15 can be factorised into x plus 3 and x plus 5. And you can probably spot that the x plus 3 can go into the bottom once and into the top once. Now here's where we desperately need to write into our answer a 1 on the top. Otherwise we'll get this answer wrong. <laughs> so uh, if we, we'll, we'll desperately take notice of the fact that there's a 1 on the top. And that's where my uh, little pedantic way of putting a 1 every time I divide something in actually uh, comes home to benefit me. The x plus 5 was on the bottom or on the denominator of the fraction. It needs to stay on the bottom. There's no reason to give it a promotion it doesn't deserve there. Okay, here nothing to factorise really, but we can do a lot of cancelling out. 5 goes into the bottom once and into 25 five times. 4 goes into the 4 once and into the 16 four times. X goes into itself once and into the other X once. So once after we've done that, we've got um, uh, 20 there. Matter of fact, I'll add uh, a Y here as well, just to show up my lack of uh, attention to detail there, 20 there, and the bottom is a 1. Let me write the y in here to save me redoing this whole video. <laughs> 
I've already read done this question once. Okay, so we've got, <laughs> we've got a 20y on the top, and that's over 1, so we don't really need to write that bottom one in. Okay, keeps you humble when you make mistakes, doesn't it? Anyway, so we cancelled down anything we could from the bottom to the top, and we put the little ones everywhere, And uh, but I just didn't notice that y there. Anyway, be careful. You can go better than me on that one. Question 6. Now, we've got quite a bit to do here. Can you notice that there's an opportunity to uh, express this as one thing squared minus another thing squared? We could express 4 as 2 squared there, and that'll give us a factorising opportunity in the, in the top, and there's a factorising opportunity in the bottom as well. So let's see how this pans out. x squared minus 2 squared is the way we will uh, express that if we wanted to use that difference of two squares method. And 4 can come out of the bottom. It goes into uh, 4 times x, it makes 4x, and 4 times minus 2 will uh, complete our factorising of, of 4x minus 8 here. So 4 is the common factor there times by 4 over x plus 2. Now we can write x squared minus 2 squared in the difference of two squares method whereby we've got the x and the 2 in uh, one bracket with a minus in it and one bracket with a plus in it. doesn't matter what order those are in but you can see they've got x and 2 in the brackets, one of them plus, one of them minus and let's see how that combines with the rest of the question. We've actually got opportunities to divide the bottom by 4 and the top by 4 the bottom by x minus 2 and the top by x minus 2, putting the little ones in every time. The bottom by x plus 2, it goes once, and in the top but once. So we've actually really divided everything there, and we're left with 1 over 1, or just 1. Occasionally that works out that everything in the bottom gets uh, can be divided in, and the uh, same on the top there. That's a pretty strange question, but still. So we used the difference of two squares there and then cancelled wherever possible. Okay, this one, uh, we've got a couple of factorising opportunities. On the top left there, we've got 3 that can come out. 3 times n and 3 times minus 2 will get us back to 3n minus 6. And that's over 4. We've got 16n over. And we can take an n out of uh, the bottom there. What do we need to multiply n by to get n squared? We need another n and we need another minus 2 there. And I think you can spot that there's some more cancelling opportunities here. 4 can go into the bottom once and into the top 4 times there. N can cancel into an N once. N minus 2 can cancel into the bottom and divide into the top once there. So what are we left with? We're left on the top there with 3 times 4, which is 12. And on the bottom we've just got 1 times 1 times 1, which we don't really need to write in. So that boils down to 12 there after we do all our factorising and cancelling. Okay, this one, dividing by a fraction. Do you remember the rule from sort of year 5 or year 6 or maybe year 7? <laughs> uh, when you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the second fraction turned upside down. You multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction. That's another way of saying it. So let's just write that out. 18 over 7a is normal. Then we'll turn it into a times and we'll turn the, other fra the second fraction upside down. We'll reciprocate. Fancy name. Okay, then we'll see if we can cancel where possible. There's no factorising opportunities in this one. So 6 can go into itself once and into 18 three times. 7 can go into itself and go into 35 five times. A can go into itself once and into the top once. We're left with 3 times 5 on the top and 1 times 1 times 1 on the bottom. And we get 15 there. It could be 15 over 1, but uh, we don't need to write the bottom ones in. Okay, here we've got a bit of a combination here with some factorising and a dividing by a fraction. Once again, let's just write it out. 4d minus 6 over 7 stays normal. We'll turn it into a multiply and we'll reciprocate the second fraction there. 21 over 6d minus 9 this time. Let's factorise the top there. 2 can come out of the top and make d minus 3. That can be uh, over 7. And 21 is fair enough. And 3 can come out of the bottom as well. And lo and behold, the brackets end up being identical there. <laughs> Nice when that happens. D minus 3 can go into the bottom once and into the top once. Uh, 7 can go into the bottom once and into 21 three times. That bottom 3 can now cancel into the top 3 once. And we're left with 2 times 1 times 1 on the top and 1 times 1 times 1 on the bottom. So that bottom 1 doesn't need to write. Whoa, we've got our work cut out for us here. We've got two trin trinomials to uh, factorise and we've got a... Uh, 
uh, divided by a fraction as well. Ooh, let's get started. Now PSF on the top here, we need two numbers that multiply together to give 25 and add together to give minus 10. I'm here to tell you that minus 5 will work well there. Look at the previous video if you're not sure how I got that. So x minus 5, x minus 5. Now on the bottom, we have a PSF a product of 10 and two numbers that add together to give minus uh, 7. We'll need a minus 5 and a minus 2 there. Minus times a minus makes a plus to make the 10. And on the number line, minus 5 minus another 2 gives us minus 7. So we'll fill in our brackets with minus 5 and minus 2 there. Then we'll multiply and reciprocate the second bit. Whoa, there's a lot of work here. So the x minus 2 ends up on the top and the x minus 5 ends up on the bottom. Now we've got massive cancelling opportunities here. We can divide x minus 5 into the bottom goes once, into the top goes once, and x minus 2 can go into the bottom once, into the top once, and x minus 5 can go into the bottom once and into the top once. So we have another situation here where we've got that strange result that everything's get, getting cancelled. We end up with 1 times 1 times 1 on the top, 1 times 1 times 1 on the bottom, and we end up with 1 over 1, which is just 1. Wow, I've worked hard for this video, and you've worked hard listening to it as well. But anyway, that's the general idea where for simplifying algebraic fractions. We'll factorise first, or look to, and then see if we can cancel where possible. Be careful with your cancelling. Put the little ones in, and any time there's a 1 left on the top, we'll desperately need to write it in. Any time there's a 1 on the bottom, we can ignore it kind of thing. All right, boy, massive examples there. I hope you've, hope you've seen one of each type there. I think you have, and that should hold you in good stead for the future. All the best with your studies. PeterBlakeMath.com.